All right, so we got a little war, World War III update here. Here's a news story that was just, uh, let's see, this is published Washington Post uh, with foreign policy, with foreign policy world. Uh, let's see, I think it was just this last week. I can't remember. Where's the date? Down here? Ah, March 12th. Okay, so a little more than a week ago. Associated Press. Now, the title is Egypt's Islamist dominated parliament votes in support of expelling Israel's ambassador. You scroll down here, and this is, I'm going to make a point here that's important in a second, but I'm going to show you something. If you go down here, here, Cairo, Egypt's Islamist dominated parliament unanimously voted on Monday in support of expelling Israel's ambassador in Cairo and halting gas exports to the Jewish state. Scroll down just a little bit. Uh, the vote was taken by a show of hands on, re on a report by the Chamber's Arab Affairs Committee that declared Egypt will never be a friend, partner, or ally of Israel. The report described Israel as the nation's number one enemy and endorsed what it called Palestinian resistance in all its kinds and forms against Israel's aggressive policies. Uh, scroll down a little more here. Here's a quotation that's really interesting. Uh, revolutionary Egypt will never be a friend, partner, or ally of the Zionist entity, which we consider to be the number one enemy of Egypt and the Arab nation, said the report. It will deal with that entity as an enemy, and the Egyptian government is hereby called upon to review its relations and accords with that enemy. Okay, uh, Monday's vote by, by Parliament could serve as an indication of what may lie ahead. Now, if you scroll up here, you'll notice that this motion uh, is largely symbolic uh, because only the ruling military council can make such decisions uh, to expel prime and, uh, the foreign ambassador, Israel's ambassador, uh, etc. However, if you look at a news report from the BBC uh, on January 24, 2012, Right here, Egypt's ruling military council has promised to step aside after a presidential election in June. So this June, uh, if all goes as planned, and we know how that goes, it might not go exactly as planned, but if all goes as planned, uh, these people, this parliament that voted unanimously to treat the Zionist entity as the uh, number one enemy, uh, you know, and never be a friend of this Zionist entity and will deal with that entity as an enemy, will actually be in power in Egypt. That's this June, so this summer basically. Now, what's fascinating about this is everybody is focusing on Iran and Syria and the threat there, which is interesting and, you know, obviously worth following. But I think it's misplaced. I think the real focus should be on Egypt. And what's interesting about this is the timing. In my book, Approaching Armageddon, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see the cover. There it is. Uh, I go into this, and this was published in uh, the spring of last year, in 2011. Uh, let me show you something about Egypt. Okay. It's in the preview here at Amazon, so that's easier to, to look up than anywhere else. Um, Okay, so we're looking at a passage in Daniel, Daniel 11, 40 through 44. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him, and the king of the north shall rush upon him like a whirlwind, with chariots and horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall come into countries, and shall overflow and pass through, and, and so on. Uh, you can read through that on your own. You can pause and read that passage if you'd like. I offer two interpretations of the two possible interpretations. Interpretation 1, the first interpretation of this passage, claims that there are three major leaders involved in the early stages of this final war. Uh, the first leader is the king of the south, and he appears to be the instigator of the war, the initiator of the war. Uh, that's not to deny that uh, it's provoked, uh, but, but still, uh, as far as the initiation of this final war is concerned, it's going to be an attack from the south here. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him. And the southern kingdom, us king, I say, is almost certainly the ruler of Egypt, since Egypt is south of Israel. In other words, the final war that leads to the Battle of Armageddon and the end of the age, uh, this present age, not the end of, uh, of the age overall, I think, 
there's things are more complicated than that. Uh, but uh, this end of this period of apostasy uh, will begin with a war uh, that is itself initiated by an attack from Egypt. Uh, again, like I said, that's not to deny that uh, it isn't provoked in some way, uh, or even that there are other uh, agents at work. But if you go on, there's a second interpretation I offer. Oh, it looks like that's not part of the preview, but here I, I summarize. Whether interpretation one or interpretation two is correct, this remains constant. The final war is instigated by the king from the south, probably Egypt. Egypt and its southern allies are subdued by the powerful forces of the desolator, who then he, uh, hears very troubling news from the north and east that causes him to respond in the passage with great fury to destroy and devote many to destruction, which I think is probably a hint of uh, some sort of use of weapons of mass destruction, perhaps uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, but either way, what we have here is over a year ago I wrote this um, and really explicitly point out that Egypt is where we should be looking uh, for the beginning of this war. Uh, in this book, uh, let me put this in here, see if we can pull up the timeline. I said that the uh, beginning of this war should happen in the summer or fall, will probably happen sometime uh, in the late summer or fall of 2012. Okay, uh, roughly around 2012. I also uh, Oh man, how do I get that highlight out here? Can I click up here? Yeah. Oh no, I lost it. Well, either way, uh, long story short, I think that uh, highly probable, given uh, what Scripture teaches, that we will see this uh, final war, this Egypt, uh, beginning with an Egyptian attack, beginning sometime between the summer of 2012 and the summer of 2013, uh, and it will last three and a half years roughly and end. Uh, in a catastrophe that's unprecedented in world history. Okay, um, but this is uh, based on biblical exegesis, and I think uh, should be taken very seriously. The book's only eight twenty-five. If you want to buy it, uh, you know that'd, that'd be great. Uh, but if you don't want to buy it, at least you can go through and do this preview thing and uh, learn what you can from it that way. Um, but uh, either way, I think it's important to see that scripture. Uh, is falling into place. The prophecies of Scripture are coming and in, coming into place. Notice one last thing. Let me, let me pull up the preview here again. Uh, in the table of contents, I do have an explanation of uh, how 2016, the end of the war, would be from 2012 to 2013, all the way to the end in 2016. Uh, how that could be wrong. So you know, I'm not saying that uh, it's guaranteed to end in 2016, although I think as events have been unfolding exactly according to the timeline I've proposed in this book, um, it's unlikely that it's wrong at this point, but it might be. Uh, but I still say how it could be wrong, and there are a few ways where uh, the argument can be mistaken. But uh, there's a table of concepts. I, I hope you'll take a look at it. It's, it's worth it. All right. All right. Take care.